Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 22 of my regrowth Let's Play. Last time I did a whole bunch of, well, between last time and now, I did a whole bunch of mining in the nether. I got myself a lot of good materials. As you can see, 41 nether gold, 3 nether diamond, uh, a stack, almost 2, of nether coal, almost 2 stacks of nether quartz, Almost a stack of nether iron, 35 lapis, 14 redstone, 51 copper, 45 tin, the list goes on and on. 15 ardite in total. Pretty nice. So this week, well, week, eh, this episode we are going to focus on using some of that. We're going to melt down our nether gold and our ardite ore, just two of it, in the smeltery. The nether gold in the smeltery will take 475c and will produce 576 millibuckets. That's four ingots worth of molten gold. And the Ardite ore is going to have a similar reaction. Ooh, these only produce two ingots apiece at 650c. We're going to be making ourselves a better pickaxe because I'm going to need to use a Tinker's pickaxe to be able to mine some of the higher tier ores. The Terra Shatterer is nice and all, but it can't do everything, unfortunately. Now, one of the big things that I'm looking at needing is... Yay, you're doing fine. Um, the Nether Emerald Ore. And I'm actually having a bit of an issue with that. If I take a look at my quest book in What the World uh, Enables, down here on Reclamation, I'm still stuck on that nether emerald ore for the steel harvest. Now, the problem I have is something that's fairly unique to my exact color vision issue. Specifically, I can't see the stuff. At all. It's very, very difficult. And I will demonstrate for you why in just a moment. I'm up here. And I'm going to change to cheat mode. I'm going to grab one nether emerald ore and place it in the world. So, if it is against a bunch of netherrack, like, say, here, here's a nice big flat wall where I can stick it. Like that. If I don't have my face right up in it, I can't see those dots that I know are there on that. It blends into the modeling. Like, completely. I do not see it there at all. I know that there are little dots on it because I've taken a screenshot and messed with the contrast and everything. And I'm pretty sure there's like one here and one here and I can see one just there. But the greens blend together so well that I can't detect that nether emerald even exists. As such, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to take that and I'm going to let that be my quest completion and I'm going to move on. Next step, it wants me to harvest the cobalt level ores and that exactly is why I am melting that ardite. An ardite pickaxe head has a mining level of cobalt where the terra shatterer caps out at steel. Let's change this back to recipe mode and we're going to toss that nether emerald ore into the lava. It's gone forever now. I will not profit by those two emeralds. I am simply pushing the quest forward on account of having spent two hours searching the nether and being unable to find one because of a color related issue. So the simplest way that I could proceed would be to just make sure the Molten Ardite is on the bottom, which it currently is. Oh, huh, what happened to the... There was go... Oh, it had just enough pump left in the wooden engine to pull the gold out. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyway, we can pour ourselves a pickaxe head cast full of Ardite pickaxe head. Fantastic. And now I have a couple of options. I can simply replace the flint head 
uh, in my tool forge with the Ardite head and call that good. It'll get the mining level up to Cobalt, the mining speed up to 8, and the durability up to 485. Now, I'm tempted to do this and ignore much more than that. But for now, um, I think we're going to do that, yes, but I do also want to do just a little bit more. It's got Stonebound. That's nice. We can also pretty easily give it a nice level of Reinforced. And we're going to do so by visiting our Part Builder and making an Obsidian Binding, which we're going to need the Tool Binding Pattern to do. Don't know what happened to my Tool Binding Pattern. I mean, gone forever, I guess. So I'll keep that. And we'll grab that off. Now, if I add this, you see that it goes from all of the same stats to all of the same stats plus reinforced three. So the effective durability becomes 692 instead of 485, which is kind of nice. I can work with that. And it does not use up a modifier. Now, like I showed you last time, we're going to want to get that silky gem silky jewel together using silky cloth so that's going to take one emerald four gold and a pile of string actually there's only two there so where is my spider essence that's the easy way to make a bunch of string there we are we'll put that back in a moment so silky cloth like that and the silky jewel that's going to allow us to add silk, silk touch to our pickaxe. And now it's just a matter of, there we are, modifier, silk touch. So now it's just a matter of back to the nether to collect nether sulfur and cobalt, both of which I have lots available right near my portal. I know the area around here very, very well at this point, as I have done extensive looking around. Sulfur is super common. It's all over the place. You don't need to worry about finding that. See, there's some right here. Man, that is not a fast pickaxe, but I'm not asking for it to be fast. If I wanted it fast, I could drop a whole bunch of redstone onto it. And I might... I don't know. You guys let me know. Should I work on maxing out the Terra Shatterer, or should I do my best to make the bestest pickaxe that I possibly can? They're both options. You tell me in the comments below. So, we have more than enough sulfur now. Let's go get that cobalt. Which I believe... There was some over here, maybe? No, that's Lapis. I'm ignoring most of the ores at this point because I don't need them. Uh, I think that's more Lapis down there. We'll find out, though. Hey, piggies. Yep, more Lapis. Darn. More Lapis. Alright. I know I have some of the stuff around here somewhere. It will be found. So I'm going to poke around, find that lapis, and we shall return. I'm stuck in the glow shroom. That is a weird thing. Strangeness. Uh, I'll be back once I am on to the next step where I'm going to be using this cobalt to upgrade this pickaxe even further. See you then. Alright, there's a little bit of cobalt. I know that there's plenty more where that came from. Might need to head the other direction, though. By other direction, I mean off into... Uh, there's two directions that you can leave my base. Portal, that is. A little base camp portal thing. Anyway, we got the cobalt that we needed to finish that part of the quest. As you can see, the next step is 
manulin harvest to be able to gather the nether osmium ore. So, to make that happen, we're going to need to head back home. So I'm going to get myself back to base and maybe pick up a little bit more cobalt along the way. I will see you there. Alrighty, home again. I have 11 cobalt and 16 ardite after my efforts. Now, a couple of things that I am going to need. Let's grab our ingot cast and our pickaxe head cast. We are going to extract all but one of the ardite in ingot form for the time being. And we're going to need to add to that uh, casting basin. That's 1296 minus 576 or 720, which when divided by 144 gets you five. I need five more gold ingots to be able to finish that off. There. All right. So we're going to leave one Ardite ingot in there as Land. and we're going to input 10 cobalt ore we're going to let that melt down the ardi ingot and the cobalt ore are going to combine to form one manulin ingot and this is necessary. I need a manulin pickaxe head. Has a mining speed of 9. Does a pretty good job mining level manulin. The only other option I have would be to get a cobalt pickaxe head and spend one of the modifiers on it, adding a diamond to increase the mining level from cobalt to manulin. However, I believe, and I'm going to check the reference material here in Materials and You, that the speed bonus I get from redstone in that one modifier will be greater than the two difference between manulin and Yep, mining level incre increase to level 3. I believe it also always increases it by 1. So, 50-50, the boost is 4.0, making a wooden pickaxe equivalent to iron. That 4.0 boost would take the 9.0 manulin and make it a 13, which is better than the cobalt. So, leaving the extra... Oh, there's that one manulin. And as you can see, we're up to 15, 19 cobalt. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to cast the manulin as a pickaxe head. And the cobalt, we're going to cast one of those as an ingot. And then we're going to dispense the five gold ingots and the cobalt into block form by turning on this pump which will move all of the gold first and then all of the cobalt now this is not as efficient as it could be it would be better if i did not remove the other nine of these but that's okay we're now going to melt down nine ardite ore for the same purpose. Huh. This is the very first time I've encountered what I've been told is a relatively common bug where the emerald pipe leaves behind some of the fluid or kind of deletes it, wastes it, because there is definitely 40 millibuckets of um, the cobalt missing. I'm not 100% certain how to get 40 millibuckets of molten cobalt. 
One cobalt nugget is 16. Yeah. That's strange. That's very strange. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to cheat in three cobalt nuggets. First things first, get that Ardite ore out of there before it becomes a problem. And my cobalt nuggets. These will get melted down and pumped into the casting basin. Now, one block of cobalt I need to keep. We're going to reserve this in the chest for the time being. Just gonna wreck things the fast way here. Then after that, I will likely shut down this casting. Actually, you know what? Now, now I'm already on this path. We're gonna let it play out. So, wow, that's gonna take a bit. All right, we're gonna let this melt. I'm gonna correct this issue and I'll be back in a moment. Alrighty, that done. We're gonna shut this thing down again. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna flat. Well, we can wait a moment. There, all done. Should not be pumping any further now. As originally planned, nine are day ore, and we're actually gonna put one of those blocks of cobalt back in. This should give us enough for one block of Ardite and one block of Manulin. Ooh, actually, I'm gonna need another block of Manulin in the long run, aren't I? That could be an issue. That's okay. It's a bridge that we will cross when we get to it. For now, though, we're just gonna hang on to our extra Ardite. And we're going to take our pickaxe back into the nether. We're going to finish the final bit, which is the mining of nether osmium. And there's lots of it between my portal and all of the common areas around the nether. Let's go get this quest done and collect our deserved rewards. I don't know what I'm doing around my base, but it is taking a severe toll on my graphics. I'm going to have to investigate and start tearing things down bit by bit. I'm afraid that it's the Agricraft crops, which is less than ideal. Alright, if I remember correctly, yes. There's some nether osmium right there. Excellent. Bam. And quest complete. 24 nether rut rutile and 24 nether osmium is our reward for mining all of the nether ores. Now, nether osmium is actually really, really common. It's all over the place. So now that you're at this point of tech, you're not going to run out. It just ain't going to happen. And on top of that, if we push the tech line a bit once we get extreme essence and we have an extra block of manulin around we can make osmium seeds yeah infinite amounts of everything that is what this pack eventually gets you so now that we actually have finally finished that quest i think it's time to head back to base and start turning this rutile into titanium using our crucible furnaces Yes, plural. I'm going to head back and I'm going to make myself a second crucible furnace. I could have sworn there's more nether osmium over here. My memory is playing tricks on me. And I'm going to do some smelting and some material processing to get a bunch of metals ready. And when it's time to actually make titanium, I shall return and show you the process that I'm going to use as well as set up some basic automation for it. Because that is what we do, we automate. All right, folks, see you soon. Alrighty, let's talk titanium. First of all, in the quest, Fire Away, it tells me that I need to make some magnesium dust, and I do so with water and quicklime in a vat. Now, Let's see, to make the quick lime, I'm going to need some limestone. Limestone is made like thus. Three water, three earth. 
I'm going to get myself two stacks of the limestone. And now, I think I want to fortify this limestone with some bone meal to make planting chalk. Now this stuff doesn't stack, so you got to be a little careful with it. If you shift click this, you're going to have a bad time. However, it gives you a 25% bonus on the amount of quicklime that you're using. So it's probably not worth it, but I did want to just demonstrate it. This is going to be set to auto eject fluids and we're going to load it with the planning chalk. These are going to make 2,500 millibuckets of quicklime a piece. And to make this go that much faster, we're going to grab our heating upgrades and give it our hyperkinetic upgrade as well. That's nice. All right. So, hmm, could use that fat, but you know what? It's easy enough to make more. There we are. Four more vats. I really like these drawers. Have I mentioned that? Because I really like these drawers. And you know what? We'll set the vats up loading. Sure, why not? I accidentally put it in there. And there we are. One vat with a max capacity of 30,000 millibuckets. Also known as 30 buckets. So, the only other thing that I'm going to need to do to be able to turn this quicklime into magnesium is water. Now, I do have the option of setting up just a water pool somewhere and doing it all by hand. I really don't want to do that. So I'm not going to. I instead, ooh, you know what? You know what we can do? Forget that with the limestone. I have access to Java. I don't have any made, but that's a simple fix. We're going to make some barrels. Well, we're going to make at least one barrel, and we're going to use it to store the chalk over top of that hopper. Just to get the maximum out of it all that I can. Because, why not? It is technically a pack with some scarcity, so material efficiency is not the worst thing you can do with your time, right? Right? Yeah, that's right. Okie dokie. Some slabs, a chest, and wood makes a barrel. Good. That does still work. And... There we go. Now I could grab my assembly halo and... Start making lots of the planning chalk. As you can see, when you're out of room to hold it, it gets thrown on the ground. So I'll just hold the right click button until it's all done. Not enough materials. Good. Fantastic. Now we have a bunch of extra planning chalk. Now, this should only fill the one input with quicklime. I'm going to want one more input filled with water. And I think to make that happen, we're going to dig like that. I am going to need two buckets of water. Which is apparently easier said than done at the moment. And we're going to make ourselves something that takes away from me needing to put water in there immediate, uh, manually, the pump. Pump is made with some fluid, uh, some golden fluid pipes, some iron gear, and some redstone. Uh, I have a couple of wood gears already, so let me grab those out. 
And then we're gonna need four couple, uh, eight couple. That will allow me to make two stone gears, which lets me make two iron gears. Ooh, also from my build craft pack. What was that? The golden fluid pipe. All right, give me one golden pipe and one. Huh, I don't have my pipe sealant in there. That's an odd choice. Probably keep that in my build craft pack and not in a random chest. Also, I seem to be running out of inventory space again. That's because I'm planning too many things at once. There we are. Now, that should be oops, all that I need for the pump. Except for the tank, which is made like so. Fantastic. Back to that build craft chest, we're going to grab a wooden engine. And I believe that the vat should be able to uh, accept water directly from the pump. So we're going to set the pump up right here. If I'm wrong, we'll be able to fix this easily. We're going to create a water pool underneath it. Like so, and we're going to attach a wooden engine and turn that engine on. Starts pumping. Nope, it cannot directly accept water. That's a little weird. That's okay. Not like I don't have a quartz fluid pipe I can attach right there. Which the... Pump should automatically output into. Huh. I'm starting to wonder if the mechanics on the pump have changed. Or maybe I just need to wait for this redstone engine to get up to speed. That's also a possibility. In any case, I'm going to check into this and I'm going to wait for this guy to produce some water. But the general idea... You know what? I don't even want you there. In the back. That, that, that will be ideal if we are allowed to do this. The general idea is that... Ooh, there you go. See? It's collecting water already. 3,000. Takes a little bit. Oop, went to two, went to three. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And we're going to stick the ch a chest there and a hopper underneath. And hopefully that'll actually work. Yes, it is pulling out the magnesium dust for me. That is exactly what I want. That is basically as winning as we can get right now. Quick climb is being very strange with the auto output, and I have no idea why that is. But every bit of magnesium that we get is one bit of rutile that we can turn into titanium. And that is another thing that needs to happen in a vat, which is another vat that I should really make myself. But this one can remain small. So for right now, we're not going to do this large scale or automated or anything at all like that. We are going to get it heated up. The nether rutile ore, we need to run through a regular smeltery to turn into regular rutile ore. Not smeltery. Um, furnace. So, let's get that happening. Oh good, more nether brick. Forgot there was more. That's okay. And the rutile ore can create impure titanium when it is smelted down in the crucible furnace. Nether bricks. Excellent. So, we're gonna add two of these rutile ore. 
and this is going to create 216 millibuckets each of impure titanium, or about four ingots worth, which gets inputted into the vat. Now we're going to go ahead and create the magnesium dust into molten magnesium, which will again go into the vat, and then it's a simple matter of pulling the items out of the vat as they become available. It does not go quickly. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't just pull out of the vat. I forgot about this. So, what we can do, though, is we can grab that molten titanium ingot in... Huh. Can I get, the, get it in a bucket? No. But I can get it in a ladle. That did not work as planned. Molten titanium. Good. Now, what that's going to let us do is grab our Buildcraft Emerald Fluid Pipe. And we're going to be able to interact with the Emerald Fluid Pipe and set that... I don't know if that's going to work as a filter or not, but we're about to find out. It's a little weird that it just shows the emerald... I mean, the ladle in there like that. Very strange. I think it worked. We'll find out once we get our ingot caster set up. Excellent. Seems to be functioning. Now, if I want to make this really fancy, I would find a way to automate this entire process using the pipes and such. Let me know if you would like to see me spend an episode making it so that I don't have to do any of this manually except occasionally add more materials. If so, I will happily do so, but it's not going to be a fast process. It will take me an episode or two to do. All right, so there's our titanium. We have titanium ingots. We can progress the quest line and the tech line that little bit further. Once you have magnesium, melt it down and mix it with molten impure titanium in either the smeltery or vat to form titanium. Ooh, the smeltery, huh? You see, the problem with that, though, is the smeltery is losing liquids now, which, well, I mean, it's always been, but it's now something I'm noticing, which is a problem. So the real star here, as far as I'm concerned, with those titanium ingots is now we can finally get our fish breeding off the ground. Also, we have unlocked the Blasting Off Again quest, but we'll deal with that another time. Right now, we are going to rush over to our fish area. Huh. Tank too small. Wow. That's crazy. I'm going to need to make the tank larger. I did not even consider that a thing that might happen. It's already gargantuan. Okay, so we will have to make the tank larger in between episodes as well. But as you can see, it's still too hot in there. The advanced cooling upgrade can be made into the ultimate cooling upgrade, changing it from minus five to minus 14 using a couple of these titanium. So I'm going to, I'm going to tweak the fish feeder and get it to functional status between this episode and next. I won't do so on camera right now. I've been poking at that for too long. Now, one final thing before we sign off, I've been taking a look at the next set of essences and the extreme infusion stone requires redstone, glowstone, lapis, diamond, emerald, creeper, spider, and experience essence that we already have and essence of shards that we do not. Also, it'd be, it wouldn't be a terrible thing to be prepared to get into Thalmcraft sometime soon. So we want to make the shard seeds, which are fairly easy, 
Only three strong essence, which I did not grab because I am a forgetful person. Back at you, back and grab my one, two, three strong essence. And it's going to require one of each of the elemental ruin, uh, one of each of the elemental runes, water, fire, earth, and air, a mana rune, and a rune of autumn. Bam, 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 bam. That should be everything we need for the shard seeds. Nope. What'd I miss? Oh, how about an essence seed? <sighs> I blame being tired. There we go. So that's the last seed that we need to create the strong essence stone. And it is going to complete a quest for us in uh, what the world is built from. The fragmented seeds. I will get six more strong essence and another infusion sh shard seed. And I will now be able to do extremely dedicated. You finally have access to most of the resources you'll ever need. Though there are some luxurious ones you think would be nice to be able to grow. I'm going to make the extreme infusion stone between episodes as well. Next time, we're going to put that extreme infusion stone to use. Making a couple of important seeds for us using materials that we just gathered for the first time. That was the wrong material. It's not Dreamwood, it's Living Rock. And we're going to continue pushing that quest chain for the... Huh, you know what? I tear down the... Uh, it might It might just be the particles from the Agricarnations, because with those torn down, this is not the problem that it was before. Hmm. Oh well. So yeah, we're going to push the tech line ahead and we're going to be able to make some cool new seeds. Get ourselves, and maybe we can actually start working on getting a final farm set up. In any case, thank you very much for joining me folks. Let me know what you thought of the episode down below. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a thumbs down if you did not. Leave a comment telling me what you thought. Either way, you'll be interacting so that I continue showing up in your subscriber feed, and I'll see you next time.